I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight is REM Sings. It's the end of the world as we know it. Ever since the pandemic, that possibility seems more and more, well, possible. And so my next guest, Stephen Ridley, has penned a vital resource for survival of humanity. It's called The Book of Outcomes. We welcome Stephen to Spotlight. Thank the folks at Sweet Spire Literature Management for helping us put Stephen in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers at home watching on YouTube to please support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us here today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Loved your book. It's a delightful blend of Eastern and Western philosophies. And what was your inspiration for writing this this treatise um i suppose it's actually gone on for a long time for several decades so through my life i've realized as i was going through my professional life how uh, broken this world had become and how uh, corrupted it had become um, i'm a, my background is finance i'm a qualified accountant in the uk and i have an mba in technology management so finance and technology are my corporate uh, background but i'm also a reiki master and a crystal healer so mm. i've got the strange mix of uh corporate and spiritual shall we say so um and they don't necessarily go very well together as right. we, as we know so um i've been studying the system for many years now and uh yeah about uh 12 13 years ago i started making the links between um finance and our production systems and carbon dioxide emissions directly um and that sort of came about <clears throat> one of my hobbies is uh is scuba diving and i was in the red sea on a dive boat in 2009 and uh, i read an article in a magazine um that was talking about el nino events and la nina events so to viewers if they're not not aware of what those are it's sort of above average o ocean surface temperature above normal that's el nino and la nina is below normal mm -hmm. so this is about oceanography climatology not about weather this is long-term trends right. um and I, in this magazine uh which was amusing because it had a picture of a very beautiful woman on there in a wetsuit and she said does my butt look big in this to get my attention <laughs> right they've got my attention um, but there was a serious article in there, and it said that these events, the El Nino events, happened on average every seven years. And through my finance training, I, I tied that with my economics training, and we used to go through seven-year economic cycles. So I thought maybe there's a correlation here. Mm. So uh, when I got back to the UK, I looked this up and looked up the gross domestic product, which is how we measure the economy growth in the United States and, and the United UK and all Western countries, and indeed probably in China now as well. So um, there was a correlation, and the correlation was exactly nine months out. And I knew that from my uh, corporate work, that that's the time lag between sort of production and effect, if you like. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we're going to recession, it's already happened nine months before in terms of cash flows. So I thought, okay, let me compute this and 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 send it off to a professor of climatology at one of the uk universities and he dismissed it i was so so disappointed and upset um uh and he was a volcanologist so he, that's where his funding was coming from so so we sort of you know get the measure of of who's where the interest is right. but a year a year later 2010 um, i was just walking along the seafront by the sea getting my inspiration and the thought came to me maybe inspired who knows you know is that one of those things um, to go home and look up to get the data? So I went back and within 20 minutes, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Manalua on Hawaii, where there's the observatory. So I got the data from for, for there for 47 year period. So this was up to 2007 because it's in 2009. So it's from 1960 to 2007. Would you believe I got exactly the same period data on the top 20 nations globally, their GDP, gross domestic? product in US dollars. I re-baselined it, put it into a spreadsheet, and I would have been happy if there'd been like 80% correlation. It came out at 99.6%, 100%, right? 100% correlation between our production and carbon dioxide. Mm. So then I set about trying to find out, you know, what was causing um, uh that correlation and i there was lots of things like wastage 
our transportation systems and so forth. So therefore, we also had a solution. So it's not just about the use of carbon fuels. It's what we do with them. Um, right. But in, in terms of the book and the writing, a lot of it was uh, spiritual. Mm-hmm. This is where we come to the spiritual link as well. And <clears throat> for many years, I was looking at uh, systems and morality. And I, I came up with um, trying to understand if we could define what morality was, because it's very subjective. We have different value systems around the world, right. and that didn't sound right to me. So uh, I came up with um, whether it was something was constructive, then it was moral. But then I thought about how to test that. If you gave money to someone on the street and they spent it on drugs and overdose, then that wasn't benevolent. So it had to be benevolent as well. Right. right? So that 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 defined it for me. And the acid test was, was immorality destructive or malevolent? And the answer is yes. So we had our definition. So combine that with working together, collaboration, and we have a virtuous circle. People working together constructively for one another will encourage other people to do it. So the way out of this is to work together because um, there's a Japanese proverb, you know, none of us are as smart as we all are. <laughs> it's actually exactly. about coming together, yeah? So it, it's this combination of things, of climate change, the financial system, what we could do to change it. And that's where I ended up with the third book, um, the book of outcomes, which is the blueprint, how to fix it, including politics and justice. But it started with <clears throat> the value system, if I could just sort of show. So I self-published this in 2010, Mm-hmm. And it took me five weeks to write after a, a road trip from London down to Rome through mm-hmm. France and Switzerland. So I did um, something like uh, 3,000 kilometers in 11 days. And that was the basis of the book. And I self-published that. Um, but later that year, um, I actually thought about publishing. So I got this out. This is the book of life. So this is the mm-hmm. first book. And this was done a couple of years later. But it's the same book, basically, but that's through... Uh, uh, proper publisher. Um, and I, I was told great that you laid out the problems and you gave your thoughts about life and the issues with the world, but then coming up with a blueprint to kind of solve these problems, like you said, I think that's why this book really works well as the final part of a trilogy. Absolutely. And, and so the second one, which only took me five weeks to write as well, this is about intention, what our, what our thinking is. So if our, if our thinking is correct, our intention is correct, and we act on it correctly, um, and we do it with that value system of working together constructively and benevolently, um, we probably find the solutions. But obviously, you know, there are political blueprints in there as well because it's about leadership and so forth. Yeah. So that, that, that's, and as you can see, they're small books, but this one took three and a half years to write. So <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this was a labor of love, this one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, so that's where it came from and the inspiration. So make trying to make a difference in the world. And and I think you are. And I think it's great to remind people not only of Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy, but also to put elements of God in there. Because, you know, for I think most of the world, whether they have a formalized religion or not, most believe in a creator and most believe that's why we should do good. And that's the that and that's the origin of the word God in the English language from the German Guts and God. So even if you say I don't believe in God, if you believe in goodness, then you do. Yeah. In 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 a form, you know, and, and that's where morality comes from. And this is where it comes from the heart, you know. So when we feel that it's right, it we feel it. We we think it. So even if, you know, sociologically we've got people who can't empathize or have less compassion, they can still reason and actually say we know the difference between right and wrong so you know we're in this together basically and through all of our thinking our gut feeling and our, and and how emotionally we feel about it as well and what motivates us to do when it when you look at the political climate when you look at the state of ecological climate when you look at disasters like covid do you feel like we're getting to be apocalyptic I know there. Well, apocalypse uh, uh, also, also means change in ancient Greek mm-hmm. as well. So it doesn't have to be doom and gloom. It, the outcome depends on us. If right. we work together, we're fine. Yeah. If we go our separate ways and there's separation. Interestingly, you know, the word sin doesn't really exist. It, it means sine, 
uh, mm. without without God. It's literally sine there without God. Right. So our our sin is away from goodness. That's the best way of putting it, even in modern language. So if we separate um, as we have been, then how can you find solutions? And I challenge people to sort of name one thing in their life where they didn't benefit from the work or the collaboration of other people yeah. and anything, whether it's food, clothing, roads, housing, education, even our thought processes. You know, we stand on the shoulders of giants exactly. and, and when we develop our thinking incrementally, shall we say, and, and we can innovate from that, from within. Has this been a source of good or a source of evil? This is a very good question. So my MBA majored, I didn't want to do finance again, and I ended up doing it anyway, but I, it, this was in technology management with the Open University, which was a new degree in mid-90s. And the academic said, we can't look at the past as a guide to the future. There will be a new paradigm, and it will be created by technology. So technology means the science of know-how, how we learn and grow. So technology doesn't have any values of its own. You know, you know, electricity can be used to kill someone or make toast. Right. You know, so it, it's the value system behind it. So there's nothing wrong with a mobile phone. There's nothing wrong with the technology. It's the intention of what it's going to be used for. So if yeah. it's used collaboratively for the common good, that's different to um, separation and control, not yeah. for the common good. That's that's the difference. There seems to be in this electronic age so much control. Um, differences of opinions are not allowed. Um, people are eviscerated by other anonymous people online. There seems to be a lot of cruelty that this is a conduit for. Like you said, I know that's this true. intrinsically is an evil and it's done some good. It's brought me back together with some best friends that I you know, lost touch with over the years and you find them on Facebook or whatever. But then you also have these people who, you know, say horrible things to other people online too. It becomes too easy to actually cause damage, doesn't it? Because yeah. you, you can actually disseminate your views more, far more quickly for good or ill. And, right. and that's the issue. So this comes down to underlying values and the virtues of compassion and pas being passionate about things, but being compassionate and have but having integrity you know that's that's a big virtue that we're missing i think in the world honoring your word you say you're going to do something you're going to do it do it you know it's a bit like saying well i'm honest most of the time there's no such thing you're honest or you're not honest right. you know a bit of honesty or a bit of integrity is a bit of a contradiction the know? shades of gray is where there's a problem you know absolutely it really has to be a black and white world it has to be this is right this is wrong. And if you think it's somewhere in the middle, you're probably not right. And that's where that value system of collaboration, constructiveness and benevolence comes in, because it's fairly clear what you do. You know, don't do if it's not collaborative, because if you're doing it on your own, someone else, you're going to be taking from someone else. You know, so think about the bigger picture, the holistic view, shall we say, and do so um, constructively, you know, do so positively. Do, do teamwork, work together positively and, and who for? For others. Because, you know, what goes around come, comes around, we call it karma, you know, or um, uh, prana in, in, in India. So different words for this, you know, um, you reap what you sow. This, everyone knows about this and it's very true. And this is what's happening. So this apocalyptic period you, you referred to is our payback. You know, it's, 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 we, we're reaping what we, we sowed, you know, right. we're all complicit in this. We're waking up to this now and we're waking up to wanting perhaps a different world, I believe. Um, and some are ahead of the game. You know, some people are more enlightened or awake than others, but other people are beginning to question. And that's the first part of this. It's awareness. A bit like Tai Chi, you know, you become mm -hmm. aware, you, it gets your attention, then you create an intention to change it and act on that so this philosophy comes from the east and has been there for a long time in qigong and tai chi um and the tao Te ching and 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 it's in all of the faith books as well you know the golden rules in in uh, the holy quran in mm -hmm. the new testament um in the torah the buddha kavana from from gauta siddhartha the buddha so they all say the same thing so and and if they're saying the same thing from different time zones uh, different parts of the world, you know, millennia apart, 
how how can that be wrong? So what we're really doing is bringing it up to date. And I think we've ignored the messages for too long. Absolutely. There was another messenger. He lived about 2000 years ago, uh, might have been the son of God, might have been a prophet, might have just been a good man. Do you think that we need to get back to more Christian values? Do you think that would be helpful or is that um, divisive because not everyone's a Christian? I just what are your thoughts on that? So Christianity is an interesting one. So if you if you listen to the words of Yeshua, um, the, the man, the person who had what what I call the Christ being within him, the Christos. Yeah, the key. It comes from the Greek uh, Cairo, uh, which is the key to the gate symbol, the, the X and, and the P. Yeah. And you see that symbol. So it's an ancient symbol, but his message was very sim- simple, wasn't it? It was basically treat others as, as you wish to be treated, the golden rule, and actually recognize that there is one. We are all one, that we're part of the universe. We're a part of God. We are not God, but we are part of God. God is within us. You know. Mm. So what he was saying is, be like me and you will see the Father. And he's basically saying that goodness is within you. And that's the Christian message. If we get that part, then yes, absolutely, I'm a Christian. I'll tell you a quick story about my religion because I worked for what the, the world's largest consultancy. Yeah. Um, and when I joined, when I was recruited, you have the form, you know, yes, uh, male, um, Caucasian, uh, heterosexual, in my case, and then religion. And then it's, uh, it said, which, which one do you want to tick? I ticked all of them. They probably thought I was mad, but for me, it was exactly the same thing. Yeah. So you know, I've prayed in, I've prayed in in cathedrals and churches. I've prayed in mosques. I've prayed in synagogues. Mm. Um, I've yet to visit Hindu temple. There's a big one in West London. Mm. But yeah, I, I've I've been in Buddhist temples, and um, that spirit that spirituality to me. So the message is the same. So there's mm. messages in the Holy Quran. There's messages in the New Testament. Um, but if we if if I said was Christianity good, if we get back to the original message, it's perfect. It's right. not even good. It's perfect, right? Yeah. So if you're a good Christian, you'll understand that it's about it's about the golden rule. You know, Jesus right. was trying to teach us this. We just lost the message. You know, yeah. Muhammad was trying to teach. Uh, you know, the, the similar. Muhammad couldn't read or write. You know, so he channeled this. He was the best channeler that, that ever lived. You know, mm. and Yish was was the was the best Reiki master that ever lived with his hands healing. So people sort of take, oh, is Reiki, you know, is that sinister? I said, Jesus used to do it. He used to try to get other people to do it. He said, you can do this too if you can actually channel the energy, the godliness within you. And that's that's what Reiki masters try to do and teach others because it's about the principle. And yet that came through Mikhail Yazui in Japan, you know, and with the line of Shintoism and Buddhism and so forth. So they're all linked. Um, that's why this East-West link-up has to take place because there are things to learn from the Tao Te Ching from um, um, Lao Tzu and Confucius. Interestingly, I saw a documentary recently. This is about value systems. And it was a resurgence of Confucianism in China and the value system and, and, and valuing your ancestors. And, and rituals and so forth and um an executive came on the program and he's chief executive of an energy company and he said we've taken on these confucian principles so we pay pensions not to our employees but to their parents mm. now that's really enlightened so you know that you don't have to worry about saving up for your old age because you know you're going to be looked after right. something in the west we're not sure about and i think that probably fuels this hoarding of money to make sure i'm okay and i can survive this yeah and yet there's no guarantee of that with stock markets and, and all the stuff that happens with pension fund investments and so forth so it's a broken model in the west where we can relearn if you like and share the best of east and west um and this is where we come together you know we come together as humanity so people who are taoists would understand buddhism you know buddhists understand christianity um you know true muslims understand that Judaism has the same goals, you know, Hillel the Elder has right. the same, same rules. So there are avatars and, 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 and holy men and prophets throughout the ages where we can go to and just compare what they say, you know, and we can get back to, to truth and goodness. That, that's, that's what I would like to achieve in my lifetime. 
Absolutely. Well, you're helping to achieve that by writing this wonderful book. It's called The Book of Outcomes. It is written by Stephen Ridley. It is a wonderful exploration of philosophy, spirituality. It is highly recommended. This is a troubled time. Uh, it's not just media distortion. These are difficult times right now that we're navigating. We do need to come together, as Stephen says. And whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Jew, whether you're an atheist, whatever it is, there is common ground among good people. We can find that. We can work together. And thanks to Stephen Ridley, he has put together a blueprint for all of this. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.